Today in your art studio, we are going to learn wet felting. Felting is when you take wool from sheep, goat, alpaca, ours is from sheep, and you take what is this easily separated fiber and you agitate it with soap and water until it becomes a piece of fabric where you cannot pull the fibers apart. It's a really fun way to work. It combines fiber arts and painting, sort of, in my opinion, or drawing. So we're gonna create small items like this using plastic bags to keep our mess down. Have fun. To begin your wet felting, you need a Ziploc bag. I have a quart-sized bag here. In a classroom, you want names and room numbers on everything. Take a piece of masking tape and place it above the zipper. That way, if it tears the bag a little bit when it's taken off, we can still reuse the bag because it will not leak. Next, you want to gather your wool and begin with an underlayer to give it a little bit extra support in the end. I use the undyed wool roving that we have because it is less expensive than the roving that is already dyed. And the first step is to sort of spread it out. <laughs> Please excuse the sound of the airplane overhead outside the window and pull until you get these wispy sort of strands and you place them on the bag all the same direction for the first layer nice and thin if you put it on if you're just like floop that will not felt nicely that will be a big old mess so you want to make sure that you're careful and slow covering with wispy strands strands hanging over the edge is fine. Then you go back in the other direction. This will not show in the end. This is just to give a little extra thickness to the felted piece. And there we go. So that's the base layer. You should already have your image in mind sketch it out first or at least have it solid in your mind what you're going to do. I'm going to be creating a white horse with gray mane so I want that to stand out so I figured if I use a dark green for the background with a little smidge here and there of blended colors it will make my white horse stand out nicely. So always you're going to be pulling wispy strands of wool off of the roving. This is called wool roving. So you pull your wispy strands and begin your background. And you work with the wool in a, a very painterly way. Think of it as painting with colors of wool instead of with paint. Changing directions a little bit when possible is a good idea because that increases the feltability of the wool and helps the fibers to interlock together better. Once your background layer is spread out, and it might be something like in this case where it's a background of sky and then the details or the mountains and the moon and stars. Or it might be more simplistic like this one because I know that the foreground image, which will be the horse, will be much more detailed. So now you take your hands and just push down on the wool to flatten it out and help it to stay together while you work. You may also tuck your strands that hang over the edge of the bag underneath so that your piece is a size that will actually fit in the bag in the end, because you do need to fit it inside of that bag to do the felting process. Mm 
right, and then continue on adding detail and building up your final image. I'll be using mainly my natural color wool. And then I'll add details with other colors. If you need the wool to create a rounded area, you still pull your strands out. But then you just form them and sculpt them to the shape you need. Just be patient and work slow. Okay, I'm finished with my white horse with a silver gray mane and tail. It looks pretty good. So the next thing is to tuck any strands that are too large underneath again. So that your work will fit into the bag. Give it another push. then making sure your bag is open. You can place your hand underneath carefully, though it's not quite as fragile as it may seem. Using your other hand, push to help fold gently and then, oh, so carefully place the work into the bag. Once it's in there, you unfold it as carefully as possible to get it back the way it was. And I might spend a little time getting that just a little bit more the way I wanted it. I think you can see the little strand of wool here has come undone. And then we'll move on to the next step, which is adding the soapy water. 